If you've been free running for any significant amount of time, then chances are at some point a friend, family member, some random person observing you training has come up to you and said something along the lines of, if you keep doing those flips, you're gonna break your neck. This video goes out to all of those people. What's going on guys, I'm Jeremy from Focus Flow and whether you're a complete newcomer to the sport of parkour, a concerned parent whose kid wants to get into this sport, or even someone who's been practicing for years and just wants something to show other people who are concerned about the dangers of this sport, then look no further because in this video we're going to be taking a look at the three biggest misconceptions that people have about the dangers of parkour and free running. So just a couple of prefaces before we begin this video. Number one, I am going to be using the terms parkour and free running synonymously. I understand that within the parkour and free running community there's debate on whether those two terms really mean the same specific style of movements. Parkour and free running cover a wide array of styles of movements and nothing is completely set in stone. So to make things simpler for everybody, I am just gonna be using the two terms, parkour and free running synonymously. And as for the second preface, as someone who's been practicing free running for a couple of years now, of course, I am a little bit biased. I love this sport. I want more people to experience this sport. Getting people into free running is a big part of this entire YouTube channel. That all being said though, just know that I will be 100% transparent with you. So with that all out of the way, let's talk about the first big misconception people have, and that is that free running is for daredevils. It's easy to see someone doing backflips on streets outside of a gymnasium and assume that they're just adrenaline junkies looking for their next fix. But in reality, that's not really true. As with any sport, free running is a discipline that takes time and practice in order to progress safely and effectively. It's not a monkey see, monkey do sort of thing where you just see the biggest trick and try to replicate that with zero experience. And it's not about taking risks that other people are too afraid or too smart to actually take themselves. Anyone who really loves this sport wants to do it for as long as they possibly can, and you're not gonna be doing it for very long if you're just taking unnecessary risks that lead to serious injuries. The beauty of free running is that you can take these bigger tricks that otherwise would be risky and break them down into doable chunks that you can then perfect so when it does come down to trying those bigger tricks, then it's no longer a risk. But rather than just explaining that to you, I feel like it would be easier to understand if I show you a first-hand example, so let's do that real quick. A trick I've been wanting to get for a little while now is an Arabian full twist. I don't know exactly what it's called, but basically it combines an Arabian with a back full in the sense that you do an Arabian just like you normally would, which is a 180 with a front flip, but then as you're about to land, you untuck and turn the rest of the way into a full 360 degree rotation. Rather than just simply seeing a trick I wanna learn and then trying my best to replicate it, hoping I don't get hurt, what I would do and what a lot of other free runners would do is approach it more methodically. So the first thing I'm gonna do before even considering trying it is make sure that I have the prerequisite moves of that trick down. In the case of this trick, it's made up of an Arabian flip and kind of a combination of a back full. So those would be a good place to start for prerequisites. All right, so that's the Arabian. Now we gotta make sure we have the back full down. Obviously, I already know that I can do these two tricks, but for the sake of warming up before trying this trick and just for showing you to make sure you know that I can do them, um, that's why I'm doing them. Oh, not the best, but I have it down at least. Before even considering attempting a new trick, I would make sure that I have the prerequisites for that trick down and down comfortably in the situation that I'm thinking about trying that new trick in. So for instance, my back full could use a little bit of work when it comes to doing them standing on flat ground. So it's probably not likely that I'm gonna be able to do an even harder variation of that trick, this Arabian full, on flat ground. So with this particular trick, for me, when learning it, I'd prefer to do it off of something a little bit higher to give me extra height. But before taking it off that height, I wanna make sure I have the feeling of the trick down and I do it in a safe environment to start with so that I know the actual precautions I should be taking. For learning this trick, I'm gonna be using the resource I have, which is the trampoline, but I don't do this for every trick and depending on the trick and depending on how comfortable I am with it, I may use more extensive, resources that I can only find in a parkour gym, or I might use less extensive measures, just doing it on the grass and practicing other safer exercises that are gonna lead me up into eventually being able to commit to the full thing. There are safe ways of learning new tricks without needing expensive equipment, but if you have it, then go for it. I 
ice on the trampoline is making it slippery. But also keep in mind that anytime I'm gonna take a new trick to a different surface, I'm also gonna redo those prerequisites for that trick on that surface because I need to make sure I'm not only comfortable with the prerequisites, but I'm comfortable with them in that situation that I'm gonna actually be doing the trick on. Whoa, first try. So I got it first try, but that doesn't mean I'm comfortable with it. So I'm gonna keep revving that out until I'm more than comfortable landing on my feet every single time. What I'm also gonna be doing is going from a high bounce to help me actually get more height for the flip to aid me, to literally just standing on the trampoline and using as minimal of a bounce as I possibly can to get the benefits of landing on a soft surface in case I do mess up, but with the added realism of practicing on a more sturdy surface that I'm obviously not going to be bouncing off of. It's still going to give me a little bit of bounce, but it's a step in between a full aid of a trampoline and no aid at all from a flat surface. And that's what this is all about, is taking those baby steps in order to gradually progress safely and effectively. There we go. So after practicing a trick in a safe environment and getting a proper feel for it, you'll understand more clearly what future steps you wanna take in terms of your progression on that trick. For me, in this scenario, landing it every time on the trampoline, feeling pretty confident with it, has given me the knowledge to know that I'm ready to try this trick on grass, assuming that I have a properly elevated surface to give me enough air time to complete it. This doesn't mean I'm going to land the trick perfectly every single time when I go out and do it on the grass, but I'm confident in knowing I'm not going to be landing in any sort of way that's going to provide serious injury. It's just about getting over the irrational fear I have for the trick and then trying it. All right, so we're back at the barnyard now and I basically already landed the trick. I did the full variation of the trick that I wanted multiple times without bouncing on the trampoline. Like I said, of course it gives me some bounce, but I know for a fact that I'm gonna have enough air time jumping off of here to complete the trick. So really all it's a matter of is making it official. All right, just like I stated before, doing it on a new surface, redo the prerequisites before trying the new trick. Now that I feel comfortable with those, it's just a matter of trying the trick, getting over the irrational fear because I know I can do it. And there you have it. I officially learned that trick. Now, eventually I'd love to get it on flat ground and then eventually start pushing it to concrete as well, but that's for another day. Now, I get this was a more obvious example of using prerequisites that can clearly help you learn a new trick safely and effectively, but the same rule applies to any trick you learn in free running. No matter what trick it is, you can always find a way to break it down into smaller, easier, more doable chunks and prerequisites for that trick. And that's what free running is all about, progressing gradually, safely, and effectively. The second misconception that people have about free running is that it has to involve climbing buildings and jumping across giant rooftops. This is a pretty rational assumption to have, to be honest, because when you type in parkour on YouTube, a big chunk of the viral videos you'll see involve just that. Like I've mentioned before though, parkour and free running involve such a wide array of movements. And just because it can involve doing stunts over big rooftops doesn't mean that's what it is. There are tons of ways you can practice parkour and free running without touching big buildings. And in fact, most if not all of my training happens in places like this. Benches, bleachers, picnic tables. These are my bread and butter when it comes to free running. And the biggest thing I probably train on is that dugout that I flipped off of in the beginning of this video. Now, even athletes that do partake in these kind of rooftop gaps like store, they prepare for these jumps vastly before even considering attempting them, checking the landings, practicing the distance of the jump from the ground itself as to be safe. They do all of these things before every single big jump that they do. And that's something to keep in mind that it's not just them hucking themselves like daredevils would. 
but understandably so, people are still concerned about those roof gaps and whatnot, but just understand that that's a very small subcategory of free running and that a ton of professional free runners even don't do that stuff. And the third and final misconception that a lot of people have about parkour and free running is that minor mistakes equate to massive consequences when doing flips and other tricks. A lot of people seem to be under the impression that when it comes to flips, regardless of how much practice you've done, any minor mistake you do will result in you landing on your head. I think this might derive from some of the conceptions we have about other sports like soccer or basketball. Even professional basketball players miss free throws after all, so who's to say that free runners are above human error that'll result in them not landing their flips? The issue I have with this argument is not that thinking free runners are above human error. Everybody has human error, that's what makes us human. The real issue I have with this argument is equating a minor error that would cause you to miss a basketball free throw with that of a minor error in free running causing you to land on your head. In a traditional sport like basketball, there's only two possible outcomes. You make the shot or you miss the shot. And any minor error in your shooting technique can often cause you to miss. However, making or missing a shot in basketball does not equate to landing on your feet or landing on your head in free running. So let's use the backflip for example's sake. Now, by no means am I a professional free runner, but I've done backflips thousands of times. I can confidently say that when it comes to a standing, normal backflip, barring any external forces and acted upon me, I can land that trick on my feet 100% of the time. Not 99, not 90, 100% of the time. That being said, of course human error still applies. Not every backflip that I do is a perfect backflip, but that's what's different between this and what most people consider in normal traditional sports, because just because it's not perfect doesn't mean I'm landing on my head or not landing on my feet. So some minor human errors that can apply to a backflip would be me holding in the tuck for a little bit too long. This causes me to slightly over rotate and have to regain my balance through taking a couple steps back. Or maybe I'm a little weak that day so I under rotate and I have to take a couple steps forward in order to recover. Whatever it is though, I'm still landing on my feet because those minor human errors don't result in massive catastrophic consequences. So in a lot of cases, telling a practiced free runner that any minor error in their trick will result in landing on their head is the equivalent of telling a professional soccer player when taking a free kick that any little bit of human error will not only cause them to miss, but cause them to completely whiff the ball. All right guys, so there you have it. Those are the three biggest, most common misconceptions that people have about parkour and free running. I really hope this video did a good job in clarifying any questions you may have about the dangers of this sport. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing for more free running content. My name is Jeremy from Focus Flow. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.